Today, we are veganizing chocolate babka. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the Make It Dairy Free channel. Thank you for tuning in. This may be some quarantine content, depending on when you're watching it. I am your host, Andrew, and I am me some chocolate. I mean, I love me some chocolate, but it's, it's not like that first statement isn't true either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Chocolate babka. We are making bread and filling it with fudge and chocolate chips. Um, enough said, right? This is a sweet bread that is typically made with eggs and butter, um, but neither one of those are gonna be making it into this dough and we're still gonna pack a beautiful, delicious taste. You have seen me create our everything dough and hopefully at this point, you have gotten a chance to either try it out and see how you know tasty and easy it is to make. If not, shoot me a, a message. Let me know what your hesitations are. We can troubleshoot together to make sure you're feeling confident. This way, you're not missing out on any of this chocolate goodness. You know what I mean? Don't, don't be looking at me like that. We still talking about bread. No. Ain't gonna be getting me in trouble. Although, chocolate goodness is my middle name. If you haven't heard of our vegan everything dough already, you must be living under a rock, which I slightly don't blame you because of the times that we're in. But the dough's description is practically in its name. Outside of that, I could describe this as the Swiss army knife of doughs. This is a three-ingredient, oil-free, ramen noodle, budget-friendly, so forgiving, the best friend you can call on when you're in trouble, no need or need if you want, prep ahead or not type of dough. Basically, if you want something sweet, this dough can do it. If you want something savory, this dough can do it. If you want something and you're not sure what it is, start here. By the time you think of what it is you want, trust me, this dough can do it. Now, while I haven't talked a single bit about the steps that you've been watching, we do have a video that gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to bring this together linked in the description. Also, I'm inviting you to hit me up. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or even makeadairyfree.com. Send us a message, drop us a comment. We will help you get this made for you and your other family. Yes, I said other family, since we're family too, right? Okay. So here's where you wanna pay attention. We're going to bring together the filling. Now, this filling is not oil-free, but if you want to make an oil-free filling, you could pretty much just melt chocolate chips and spread it across the dough. That's my lazy way, but hey, it is oil-free and it does cut calories if you're into that sort of thing. We're going to put some softened butter in a bowl with turbano sugar, brown sugar, and cocoa powder. Now mix it together with a spatula. You can really use any sugar you prefer, I went with brown sugar because I like the hint of molasses flavor and turbano sugar because this sugar is less processed and it has a little bit of a caramel flavor to it. Other times I swap the sugars out for just your typical cane sugar or some coconut sugar if I have it on hand. These help pack a little sweet and a little bold flavor. From here, roll the dough out to roughly about 9 by 17. As you begin filling, do your best to try to even out the filling across the whole dough. Also, try to leave an edge of about an inch on each side. When you're done, you're gonna take one of the two longest sides and try to roll the dough tightly until it meets the other side across from it. Okay, so quick tip number one. You can add water to the edges of the dough to help seal it better once you roll it up. Quick tip number two. Cold dough is much easier to shape. So my initial rise is done in the refrigerator and then I take the dough out once I'm ready to put the filling in and this allows the dough to stay colder for longer. Like you see here, once you have the dough all rolled together, you're gonna slice it directly down the middle, and then you're gonna take your time and fold each piece of the dough over each other, basically twisting it together. If you have a large bread pan, you may be able to fit this whole thing in. If not, you can cut it in half and make two. 
This is going to be your easiest part. When your dough has roughly 10 to 15 minutes to come out, make your simple sugar. All you need is water and sugar and some time to let it simmer. Then as soon as your dough pops out of the oven, you're going to brush this on top, allowing all the juices to soak into the dough. This is going to give a crusty top, but also a glossy finish that not only looks amazing, but also tastes amazing. All right, story time. All right, so every Saturday in our house, I typically make every meal for the whole day. Um, if not every meal, definitely breakfast. Like I, I'm like breakfast king on Saturday. One Saturday, I create this babka bread and we crush it. I mean, the family loves it. I mean, this is the first time we're having it and the family loved it so much. I created another one later on that day. But the second one, obviously we're having it for the second time. So we ate it, but not all of it. It's still a good amount left, you know? So we end up going out for the rest of the day, spending our Saturday out and about. I mean, we had a blast. We did a couple different things, but ultimately we were so tired when we got back home we all just went straight to bed, like nothing in between. Walked in the house, straight up the stairs, right to the bed. The next morning, my, uh, my daughter comes up to me. Well, not that daughter, my other daughter. Yes, that daughter. And she says, Dad, are we making breakfast? I'm like, well, we still have some of that chocolate bread that we ate yesterday. So we rush down the steps and it happens to be that the bread is, it was left out. You know, we didn't put it away. Um, we didn't store it properly. Basically just had it hanging out on the counter. Now the bread is slightly stale. I'm not saying nothing, but I toss it in the microwave for a bit, hoping that it would be good. I give it to my baby and she eats it. And now her face is slightly stale and I'm trying not to make eye contact. So she comes up to me and she's like, dad, it's, it's not as good. So I'm like, Mr. Positive in the house, just to give you a little perspective, like I'm very optimistic. So I'm like, baby, when life throws you lemons, make lemonade. She's like, but I don't have any lemons. So I'm like, all right, don't worry about it but she she won't let it go she's she's going over to the refrigerator she's opening the fridge and she's like dad i don't see any lemonade so i'm like little girl <sighs> she says to me dad in her like little sassy voice dad why don't you just make some french toast so me It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Dad, but we still don't have any lemonade. So now we're gonna bring the French toast mixture together. You can bring this together with a blender or by hand with a whisk or even a food processor will do the trick. Personally, I get really weirded out by oversized chunks. So I like to blend everything down to my comfort. So in with a banana, some dairy-free milk, a little brown sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, and some flaxseed. And while we didn't make lemonade, we definitely had some lemons to use. So this may sound odd, but I love to add just a teeny bit of citrus to my French toast mixture. The balance that this has on the dish will have you on one. Just don't knock it till you try it. From here, you can either pour your mixture over the French toast, or you can dip the French toast inside the mixture. While those soak up the mixture, I heat up a little vegan butter inside of a skillet, keeping the skillet between a medium and low heat. From here, everything goes real quick. I cook the French toast for about two and a half to three minutes on each side, and then I like to serve them with some fresh fruit and maple syrup. Hey, once again, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your time and hopefully you're staying safe. Remember to tap the like button and follow us. Go ahead and drop a comment and believe in good. 
I'll see you in the next one.